professor of the Theological Academy Alexei Iliko Zypov. Fragment of the book, God. Teleological argument. Its essence is as follows. The beauty and amazing expediency of the structure of the material world, living organisms, and finally, a person with his psyche, mind, heart, conscience, and moral law cause amazement. Pythagoras, shocked by the picture of the starry sky, called it the cosmos, that is, beauty. Where and how could all this have come from? What kind of great intelligence was the source of such a world? This question led many ordinary people, philosophers, and scientists to believe in God. Here are a few statements of modern scientists about this. Professor M. Ruse, arguing about the possible root cause of the world, writes, the concept of such a reason brings us back, in fact, to the recognition of a higher power of one kind or another, which can well be called God. By the way, it seems to me that this argument falls under the class of arguments traditionally known as teleological. And continues, in general, the assumption that behind the cover of the existence of the universe, behind its organization, there must be some kind of intelligence, is beginning to seem more and more plausible these days. The balance between gravitational and electromagnetic interactions inside stars, writes Professor P. Davis, is observed with almost inconceivable accuracy. Calculations show that a change in any of the interactions by only 10 to 40 of its magnitude would entail a catastrophe for stars like the Sun. Modern science does not doubt the anthropic, reasonable, structure of the world. The famous physicist Ralph Istling commented on this principle, in absolutely everything, from the constants that determine gravitational, electromagnetic, strong and weak nuclear interactions, and up to the basic biological prerequisites, we find that the cosmos as a whole, our sun in particular, and especially the earth are so precisely adjusted to us that inevitably, the question arises, did not God or someone else with a similar name create all this, primarily with us in mind? It's too much of a coincidence, even a miracle, to call it pure chance. And how did life come about? Science does not know the law according to which any material structure could give rise to it. The probability of the emergence of life from a random coupling of molecules is so small, according to some calculations, it is 10 to 255, that, according to the American scientist Kassler, this, implies the actual impossibility of the appearance of life. The assumption that a living structure could arise in one act due to a random combination of molecules should be rejected. The following comparison is made. The probability that a cell will arise spontaneously is at least equal to the probability that some monkey will print the full text of the Bible 400 times without a single mistake. Therefore, many scientists, unable to find a more logical explanation of the origin of life and the laws of the structure of the world, came to believe in the existence of a reasonable creator, God. For example, our wonderful scientist N. P. Bektareva, academician of the Russian Academy of Sciences, director of the Institute of the Human Brain, at the Council Hearings, Faith and Knowledge, Science and Technology at the turn of the century, in March 1998, said, Having devoted my whole life to studying the human brain, I come to the conclusion that it is almost impossible to understand the creation of such a miracle as the human brain without the concept of the creator. The persuasiveness of the teleological argument consists primarily in the fact that it puts consciousness before an alternative, whether to recognize the divine mind as the source of the laws of such a purposefully arranged world, or the first one not only answers the question about the nature of our world, but also reveals to a person the meaning of his life. The second leads a person, without a rudder and without sails, 